This episode was brought to you by Big Moose. Find out about the One Million Project at bigmoosecharity.co. Pals, pals, greetings, greetings and welcome to another episode of Everything Endurance. Um, sorry we kept you waiting so long. Um, that's, you know, grossly awful of us and uh, I'm desperately, desperately sorry. I won't lie, we uh, rolled straight off Christmas into the spine race in January. Um, then we rolled straight out of that into two back-to-back events in the Arctic across February, which we rolled straight out of into the Highland Ultra, which we've just returned from up in the West Highlands of Scotland. Um, that's it. You know, we are we are back. It is 2022 and our race calendar is back just as full as it was pre-pandemic, if not more full. Um, and we just got stretched real, real thin, real quick. So massive apologies that we haven't been putting out episodes. We've desperately wanted to. We just haven't had the time to do it. Um, but good things are coming our way. We've we've taken on new members of the team here at Beyond the Ultimate. We have uh, Jenny now, our new marketing guru. We have Rachel, who's helping out with the logistics behind the scenes. And all of a sudden, here I am talking to a camera again, which just feels fantastic. Uh, we've got three episodes in the bag for you already. They're going to be coming out over the next few weeks. And we are going to keep up doing what we used to do, getting an episode out every couple of weeks for as long as we can. If if we hit points in the year where we are just too busy and something has to give, then this will be the thing that gives. But hopefully, fingers crossed, this is us back now. Um, next thing's mentioned, you'll have noticed the new ident at the beginning. We've uh, we've gone back to Big Moose. Um, we just really wanted to give them our support this year. To, to know a little bit about who Big Moose are and what they do, and you need to go and listen to their founder talk. So... Go back, listen to episode 11, and uh, you'll learn all about Jeff, who is the guy that set up Big Moose. It's the charity that we're going to be supporting across our events over the next 12 months minimum, if not much longer. They're in the middle of something at the moment called the One Million Project. Go to bigmoosecharity.co to learn all about that. This is all about supporting people through their mental health problems. And I'm going to go straight out there and thank Jeff and Big Moose um, and everyone in that uh, in that charity right now, um, because I can count myself among the people that they've offered support to. Uh, just like half the planet, apparently, my mental health took a, a very serious kicking across the pandemic. And I'm someone who has juggled various colorful mental health problems for the entirety of their adult life. Um, and I needed some support. Uh, Jeff at Big Moose managed to put me in contact with a mental health practitioner who was exceptional at helping me manage my anxieties and my immediate problems and get my ducks in a row so that I could start the process of understanding what was going on in my head and rebuilding my mental health from the ground up. And I am in a much, much better place now for the support that I got through Big Moose. So do it. Pause this. Go and Google it, bigmoosecharity.co. Um, they both need and deserve your support. Um, I believe I just mentioned, we're just back from the uh, West Highlands of Scotland, the Highland Ultra. Oh my days, I have never seen anything like it. We have never had weather like this. I, I, I've... I think it must be like once in a lifetime that you get a run of sort of four or five days in a row like this in April in the West Highlands of Scotland, where it was basically t-shirt weather every day. You you could have been forgiven for thinking while you were looking out over the locks there, out at the Isle of Skye, that actually you were sat in the Aegean looking across at Greek islands. It, It was that spectacular out there um so yeah i'm sure if you've been looking at beyond the ultimate social media or anything you've been seething with jealousy over the last couple of weeks as we post pictures of ourselves up in these glorious scottish mountains somehow getting suntans i mean i didn't think lack of sun cream was going to be my major problem when it came to packing my kit before this race but thus it was um yeah there you go being as bold as i am as well you were did manage to burn the solar panel, which is the first time that's happened for a couple of years. Um, But yeah, Highland Ultra, if you are at all interested, have a look up on the website. You will find that places for 2023 are available. Now, I would love to be able to promise you all that if you run over there and apply right now, that we can promise you the same weather we had this year, but I cannot. (laughs) I cannot and will not. But fingers crossed, you never know. Maybe lightning will strike twice. 
Um, we were told in Namibia that the herd of elephants going through our camp in 2017 was probably a once in a lifetime experience and wouldn't happen again. And they've come to visit us three years in a row. So who knows? Maybe this is our thing now. We do beautifully sunny events up in the highlands. I'm going to touch wood right now because that's going to come back to haunt me. I, I, I can picture now this particular bit of audio coming back to haunt me next year when it's absolutely hurling it down up there so apologies in advance but yes highland ultra 2023 head to the website you you will not regret it it's spectacular up there um okay so that's the sort of business end of things attended to uh that's our apology for the amount of time we've had off attended to um we are back we are, and it's time to introduce a new guest. How exciting is this? Um, today, we're going to be talking to somebody who I first met uh, during the Winter Spine earlier this year. Um, it was the first time we had launched the Challenger North, the 168 mile top section of the uh, full Montain Spine race route. And Simon Roberts threw himself at it like a bat out of hell. Uh, he stretched the race logistics as thin as they could possibly go. He set a blistering pace throughout. Um, it didn't look in any doubt from start to finish that he was going to cross that finish line first. And frankly, he has created such a run of form now that it really feels that inevitable whenever he enters anything, that there is a very good chance you are going to see Simon Roberts's name right up there at the top, if not at least on the podium. Um, I've just given away the name of the guest halfway through my spiel, haven't I? I mean, you've already read the title. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go back to the beginning and re-record this. You're just going to have to live with it. But um, yeah, Simon Roberts, winner of the Dragon's Back, winner of the Montaigne Spine Race Challenger North Winter Edition, uh, recent winner of the rescheduled Cheviot Goat, uh, an absolutely awesome ultra runner in the form of his life after a couple of years of pandemic chaos. Um, so without further ado, it just remains for me to introduce Simon Roberts. Simon, how are you? I'm not bad, thank you, Will. I'm just just recovering from um, my my COVID, which I had last week. Uh, not so, you yeah, as but, well. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm feeling better now, though. So uh, yeah, on the mend. Oh, good stuff. I hear there's a lot of that around uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the last yeah, every, over the last couple of years. It. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I know anyone anymore who hasn't had it at some point, but you were supposed to be, when we were arranging this podcast, you were going to be coming to me with a suntan fresh off the back of a trip to Italy. I should guess you have. lost that, didn't you? Yeah, I should have had a face full of pizza and a suntan. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I should have been out there for uh, the Scarpa team athlete meet. So I had to miss that. And then I also was supposed to be racing last weekend as well at the Anglo-Celtic Plate for Wales, so I had to cancel that as well. So yeah, uh, two big blows. Um, so not not the best timing, but there we are. I've had it now and I'm, I'm through it. So uh, that's done. Look forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be enough of that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, okay. So you've you've had a bad couple of weeks, but all in all, 2022 not been a nightmare for you so no, far. No, no, I, I can't complain too much. No, <laughs> no, no. A couple of big podiums, and you're fresh off the back, really, from the Cheviot Goat, aren't you? So congratulations for that. Oh, thank you. No worries. Yes, Cheviot Goat was um, oh, well, it was uh, last month now. Yeah, so it was it was the rescheduled Cheviot Goat, where it should have been in um, December, but Storm Arwen battered up north. So yeah. uh, it was just too much disruption and they had to, um, they had to sadly cancel that date. Well, I, you know, watching that from our side as race organisers, we were heartbroken for them. Like, yeah. I, we can imagine what it would have felt like to so just, just an act of nature, and then the rugs pulled out from under you. Oh, so, it's, I mean, still, it's still a pretty, it's still a quite messy up there now. I mean, it's it's going to be a big clean up. The, you know, there's still trees everywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean. The, Obviously, we're going to come to this in a bit, but you did the Challenger North with the spine as well, didn't you? And obviously, yeah, there was the, yeah. the forced reroute on that as well, because half uh, the, of Northumberland had been with, blown the away. The one with the taxi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we'll come to that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the meantime, you know, as congratulatory as I want to hit, uh, be about the Cheviot Goat, and I obviously want to hear a bit about that, I want to push you back a lot further because this is this is the first time we've spoken on the podcast and 
I always think it's fascinating the way that people come to get into ultra running. People come at it from so many different angles. Some people don't start until they're in their thirties or forties or even later. Some people <laughs> seem to have been born in running shoes. So, yeah. where where did you come from, Simon? Were you a were you a sporty youth? Um, I was sporty in primary school. Yeah, so I was in the cross country team and um, and football and things like that. And then going into comprehensive school and yeah, it was just I was playing tennis and playing football but um, I didn't see any of that through so once I hit 16 it was um, all about just drinking with your mates and things like that then and, um, yeah I spent quite a few years then just a bit of a party head um, yeah lots of festivals and things like that as but, you do um, yeah as you do um, but so yeah n- n- nothing sporty at all Going, growing up really um, but then my sister she she kind of signed me up for like an obstacle course race when I was like 25 24 25 so that was that's pretty much what kicked me off on a fitness thing really um, and that's where yeah I started doing running I started enjoying the running and um, yeah that was where the journey of this running started was yeah Tough mudders and rough runners and all those sort of OCR things seem to have dragged a lot of people off the sofa. Uh, it, and it seemed to be, it didn't matter whether you had any background in it, one of your mates at any moment over a pint could somehow keel haul you into 10 miles yeah. of obstacles in the mud. It was just so appealing to everyone and it looked fun. So you didn't, and it didn't look like competitive. So it didn't really, there was nothing to put you off from giving it a go. Yeah. So it, yeah, those things. Yeah, no one's going to embarrass yourself there. You're all covered in crap anyway. Yeah, you're all doing the same thing, and it looked it just looks like a, a fun thing to do then, didn't it? Um, so yeah, they it was a, it's a yeah, and like you said, lots of people got into running just from these these obstacle course race events. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. But it so wh- when did you start sort of getting into bigger distances? Um, so started off. Right at the start, was I was running with my mate Julian. We uh, both living in Cardiff, and we like we were just doing laps of Rove Park Lake. So it's like it's like a two mile loop, and started off doing that. And then Julian talked me into doing a half marathon. Um, so I'd done that. Um, I thought it was okay. But, um, I didn't didn't really continue doing running like that. I continued with the obstacle course racing. So I was doing lots of Spartan races and uh, rat races and things like that. So I'd done that for a couple of years. Um, but then I was also training with my mate Julian. He, he was already training up in the Brecker Beacons. So for one run, he, he just asked me to go along. And um, yeah, I absolutely loved it. That was it. That was it for me then, really. Um, so uh, yeah, I liked the mountain running side of things. And then from there, then um, my first mountain race was Man V Horse. Oh, so a, <laughs> incredible! Yeah, so yeah, that's a pretty. Uh, it's got a lot of history. That race it's, it's quite it's real famous, pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's a really really hard race to do. So I think it's like a twenty miler or something. But it's on some really steep hills in uh, in mid Wales. So yeah, it was a nice uh, nice taste of proper mountain running that one. Yeah, absolutely. Like we, we might not be at ultra distances there, but that's some serious, serious running. Like, and if you yeah. man versus horse, you should definitely go and look it up if you don't know what Simon's talking about there. Because yeah, it's sort of a lot of history in that event. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was sort of a love of the mountains maybe then that pulled you into these really long distance events. Yeah, and then um, so the first then I started then I done an, an ultra forty mile ultra in the Brecon Beacons. Um, so that was my first big long distance. Um, oh no, I also done the Gower Ultra. It was just a bit of time before that, which is around the Gower Peninsula, so a coastal ultra. That's Lovely. a perfect one. That's a perfect one for somebody to do their first ultra run. Um, yeah, learned a lot of lessons on that race. Um, about nutrition, you know, you shouldn't buy all your food the night before. <laughs> um, type thing because <laughs> uh, you can have a bad stomach so yeah um yeah so that those those it was those times there yeah, that's where we really kicked things off for me then yeah would you say you're a fairly competitive person because 
you're talking about some really hard events here and it's it's kind of a you know i i know the spartan races are tough and your sort of tough mudders are difficult and stuff but it's a bit of a different thing to then be going right i'm going 40 miles in the brecon beacons middle of nowhere top of a mountain uh, yeah. you know I'm, I'm going to get myself into some serious stuff here what 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 kept pushing you to push the distances up because i don't know if you've heard but a lot of people just get to sort of half marathon and that's that's fine they leave it there. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what made you push way further than that? Um, I, I don't know if I was competitive. I wouldn't say I was competitive, but I definitely like to challenge myself. I definitely, you know, I was racing these races. I wasn't really, I didn't really care about what my position was or anything. I was literally just doing it just to finish these races and see what I could do. So, yeah, I think that's just what, why the distance kept growing and growing and progressing. Really, it was just just, just um, to, to continue to challenge myself and see what I could do, and then eventually, as I was doing all these forty milers and the beacons and whatnot, then eventually I ended up um, going for a Dragon's Back race in two thousand nineteen, which is a bit more than a forty miler. It's just a, a tad. It's a bunch of forty milers <laughs> back to back to back. So uh, yeah, that was a. Uh, I heard about it on the radio uh, in Bassos, Alexandra on yeah. BBC Radio 2. He'd done it, so he was banging on about it. So that's the first time I actually heard about the race. And then I thought, right, that's a, that sounds like a big challenge now. That's something I could probably not do or, or do, you know. It was um, that type of thing. But yeah, so that's why I went for the Dragon's Back. I'd say it's the first time you'd heard about the race. Doesn't it end like... It's not you're finishing not far away from Cardiff, right? Um, so back then it was the um, it was the old course, and so mm. it was in um, Van Dilo, that's where it finished. And now it's a six day race, and now it finishes in Cardiff Castle. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, well. Okay, so I mean, I'm going on my facts here. The uh, very scant research I did on the run into this. Right. That Dragon's Back ended up as you finishing about 23rd. Was that right? Yeah, Something like yeah that? it was 20, 23rd. Yeah, that's bang on. Which is yeah. still like, we're way beyond respectable here. That's that's a yeah. really solid result. It, yeah, you know? my own, my goal was just to finish it. That's all I wanted. I just wanted that little, um, that little uh, Dragon Trophy. And that was the whole aim. And yeah. 23rd, I was really, really happy with that. Yeah, like you said, it is, it's a respect for anyone who finishes top 30, something like that, and they've given it a good go. Um, so, but then that's where things started to click in my head then. I was thinking... Well, that's right. what I was thinking. You're talking about this. It sounds like that's the moment where you're like, oh, hang on, I'm, I'm not bad at this. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was a defining moment that race was. Um, and that's where, I, that's where I started after that race then I started buying training books and reading things and watching YouTube videos and how to train. So, um, yeah, so for the rest of 2019, that was pretty much what I was doing and just learning how to train and do interval training and things like this. So that was my first stab of actually make, uh, trying to be a good competitive runner. Well, I mean, it sounds like it started working pretty quickly because then also that year you've got third in the Chivy at Go and you did yeah. the full spine, right? Um, yeah, so that third place in the GV go, that was a big thing. Um, so it was my first podium, and I was on the podium with Galen Reynolds, who won the Dragons Back yeah. earlier in May that year. So to be sharing a podium with him, I'm thinking, right, so my training must have been going well. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, I also beat, uh, beat John Kelly on that race as well. So he, he was my hero. So here we are. I was, uh, I was happy with that as well. Yeah, that's got to feel good. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Um, and then, yeah, like you said then, so it was my first spine race then was like a month after that. Was that uh, that's going to be spine race 2020. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Very so, early 2020. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that was full spine race. Um, did not go to plan. I was just, I, I was I was going in there with high expectations of myself because I had a good result at the GOAT. So I was thinking, all right, I could do well in this spine race. But I fell and twisted my knee on the first day. Uh, so the running was over for me on that race, but I, I still walked, I hiked, pretty much hiked, speed hiked the rest of it then, because I still wanted to get that finished medal, and um, which I managed to do. Um, so I was still happy with that, but I didn't race it like I wanted to. It, and, for context, though, still came 16th. 
in a, in a yeah. year where you'd got injured in the first day. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big race to be carrying an injury through as well. So that's, that that takes some determination. Yeah, it was um, wasn't the brightest thing to do because it was a long recovery. Um, after that, with a bad knee, um, yeah, it took months and months. It took a couple of months for my, for my knee to heal. Um, if I'd stopped and just pulled myself out, it probably would have been, you know, a couple of days, maybe a week of being injured. But well, luckily, yeah. with that being January 2020, you had uh, plenty of resting time just after that, right? Because yeah, we're we talking had, just we before chaos rest, happened. Yeah. yeah. So was it in March? Was it when? Um, pandemic kicked off end of march yeah really we sort of it started being in the news in february and then march was locked down yeah so all the races cancelled and yeah we could for, for a time we could only run from our houses for uh you know not we couldn't go far i couldn't drive at the beacons or um yeah basically our our running freedoms were taken away from us for a good while so that's where, because we were only running locally then, um, that's why I got into road running pretty much. And then that's where I started getting fast. And so I was doing all my interval training and things on the roads now. And I was becoming a road runner, but naturally becoming faster and stronger, um, learning proper running technique and things like that. And because we were all locked down, I really, really got into it and I really, really focused. Um, I was doing, I was training twice a day for some days as well. So I was doing two sessions, um, getting injured a lot as well. So I was, <laughs> I was learning, you know, I was training at this high intensity. So I was learning a lot through, through that, through that, um, early, early lockdown. And um, yeah, just generally getting faster for, um, as, as the months went by. And, um, so that's for all of pretty much the rest of 2020, and then the races come back then in 2021. So my first one was Scarfell Sky Race. Yeah. Um, yeah. So went into that and I came third in that. So pretty happy with that. And um, obviously back on form, but I st- still learned from stuff from that one. Basically learned, you know, you've got to run really hard if you want to go be first. So yeah, I just wasn't aggressive enough in that race. That's where I learned about my running with aggression and things like that um so the race after that then was lakes sky ultra so i went in there and yeah i won that one then so i went in there full guns blazing fully yeah. aggressive yeah <laughs> but, uh, yeah don't mess it because I, I felt like i was messing about a bit on the scaffold sky race but like, <laughs> none of that Pin third just pissing yeah. about <laughs> <laughs> I did. I just reached a point in that race where it was like kind of just was battling it out with Josh Wade. Oh yeah, right. And yeah, I don't know. I think it was just racing Josh. I think he just done me. But yeah, I just I kind of lost, lost heart and I, I was uh, yeah. So, but then Lake Sky Ultra, I was thinking like, can't do that. You've got to race aggressively from start to the finish if you want to win a race. And yeah, that uh, that plan seems to work. And yeah, certainly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so and for Josh for that matter, he won the uh, challenger this January as well, didn't he? There's he a did, yeah. there's yeah, another very no. good young runner. He is, yeah. He's a yeah, I'm a big fan of Josh and he's a top lad as well. He's a good guy and he's just hell of a runner and he's um is he's twenty seven now, I think. So uh Bloody hell. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> Everyone's he's too good. young. <laughs> he's gonna do some good stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, we're talking about you today, Simon. So right, we, okay. <laughs> we've we, we've come into twenty one. You're hitting the podiums. You're hitting your stride. Yeah. Then we hit the dragons back again. So we you've do. you were like what twenty odd last time you came in, and now we're back. How, how was that event for you? Because this this feels like a big moment. Yeah, um, I'd sign. So it was a, you sign up for it a year before, so signed up for it in. Um, 2020 September so I signed up for it I was already feeling fit and fast from all my training in lockdown I was thinking right so I was top 30 before I wasn't trained very well then so I think right on this one I'm going for a top spot and I, I never didn't keep that secret I banged on about that to certain people and I had mentioned it on like a podcast or something like that so yeah, go back going for a top spot. Oh, I remember, yeah, I was I was with Shane 
um, who runs the Dragon's Park with yeah. Shane uh, a, few, um, a couple of weeks ago, and he reminded me of an email or something I sent to them saying that I was going to win, and he was <laughs> laughing, <laughs> and he was laughing about that. Um, yeah, so that was my aim. Um, there was no secret, and I had already had a good year in 2021, so my confidence was right up there. Um, yeah, and you weren't wrong. No, managed to uh, manage to give it my all and more. And then, yeah, I came away with a win at the Dragons Back 2021, which and become the first Welsh winner as well, which is, uh, yeah, it's oh, pretty special. Oh, on your home turf. That's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and it was in, it was the new day, it was the new six day Dragons Back, which finishes mm. in Cardiff Castle. So, yeah, so all the family and that were there. It was a, uh, Brilliant, yeah. <laughs> it was a oh yeah, you must have time. had a great welcome across the finish line. That's 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 epic for you, pal. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty emotional. <laughs> yeah, well, God, yeah, I bet. And this is it. You've you've been working towards this now across the pandemic through all that uncertainty, and boom, you've done it. You've gone back. You've climbed twenty three places up the leaderboard and come out with the win. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if maybe the uh, the fact that you sort of publicly said on the running that that you were going to win this one, how much pressure did that put on you during the event? I don't know. I was, I was feeling so confident that I, I wasn't feeling the pressure really. I was thinking, all I got to do is just go out there and do my thing, and it should be enough. But I was um, I had a it was a battle all week. I had a battle with Russell Bentley. Yeah, he's a he's a really good runner. He's a He's a fast chap. He's um, he got a 220 marathon, so Bloody he knows hell. how to move. Yeah, and he lives up in North Wales, so he's um, he's always on the hills. Um, so we had a good battle with him all week. So it wasn't an easy week at all. Um, and that made it even more sweet as well. I didn't want to just smash a race and have, and you know, not have somebody to race with. So it was good that Russell was there. Um, definitely tested each other. He tested me big time. Um, so yeah, that made it all a bit sweeter. Really, felt it felt more earned. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite understand. Yeah. Well, that's that's absolutely amazing, pal. And I mean, things have stayed on this extremely high plateau since then, right? You, you're coming in here off the back of winning the dragons back, and then the first ever spine challenger north comes up in January. Yeah. I mean, it, how far in advance did you sign up for that? Like, what 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 put you in that race? I can't remember when they opened that up, that North Challenger up because I was gutted that I couldn't go on the full spine because that date was 2021, but that got cancelled because of COVID. Yeah. That meant all the entries were rolled over to 2022, so it was already jam-rammed, so we couldn't get in it. I was, yeah, I was gutted then because I was thinking, oh, I wish I did sign up, you know, but that was that. But then they announced the new Challenger North race. Uh, I think as soon as they opened that, I signed up. I just uh, I just wanted to be part of the party, you know, type thing. I, I don't care what race, just get me on a spine race. I want to be part of it this year because I absolutely love that event. It's a uh, it's, yeah. It's um. You don't have to say that just because I'm wearing the hoodie on camera. Okay, just, right. you know, that's, it, it, it's okay. <laughs> It's, it's just what I throw on this morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, I mean, that was amazing. We were really glad to have you along because obviously I'm I'm working behind the scenes on the spine race, running the, yeah. the media team as we go up the country and you just made it really, really exciting for us. Uh, you stretched the team. I mean, you were fast. Um, we, we had high hopes for you right from the beginning of it. But um, how, how was the experience for you? Because it's yeah. very different to the Dragon's Back, right? That that Dragon's Back was a really sunny event. It was a hot, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a bit too hot the first two days. So it got up to thirty degrees. Oof. So um, no danger yeah. of that on the spine. No, that, you know, it would be weird if that happened on the spine. <laughs> so yeah, but it's also different to the Dragon's Back as um, spine races are, are non-stop. Whereas Dragon's Back is you, know, you camp every night in a comfy tent. And you get fed, um, fed and whatnot, and you you know what to expect. But when mm. you're doing a non-stop, such as spine race, you don't know. There's so much unknown. Um, you've got to manage yourself a lot more on the non-stops. You've got to decide when to sleep. You've got to decide when to eat. And 
and so it's, it's lots of decisions that you need to make yourself which are, those decisions are kind of made for you on a um on a stage race yeah so driver's back and spine race yeah you, you can't really compare them but but yeah so with completely different times of year as well so running in the winter on the Pennine way um yeah i think i prefer running in the winter anyway i'm definitely um a cold weather runner I'm more comfortable um and yeah so going into spine north challenger then um yeah just, just just wanted to go in all guns blazing really and see what happened and yeah um i hit a few snags along the way so different problems with nutrition um a bit of sickness but yeah managed to get good. through it I seem to remember a day where you, I, I got woken up from like two hours of sleep on a sofa and we'd, we'd already had a couple of sort of quite high profile runners drop out, which it, behind the scenes were all like, oh, no way, I can't believe it. Yeah. And then someone comes up to me and is like, Simon Roberts has slowed down quite a lot. I'm just like, no, I'm not. We, we're not having an we're not having another <laughs> leader drop out of this race. I'm not having it. And I w- I was sat there behind my laptop, absolutely willing your dot to get to yeah. get moving again. But you did. You picked yourself up. So yes. Yeah, so it what, was, what um, was happening there? Um, I got to Greenhead, and I was throwing up quite a lot. Um, I was just eating too much sugar, too much crap. I think I had eat, eat, had been on the sugar diet for like 24 hours at that point eating too much of the same stuff as well. I mm. think it's just not good for you. Um, and then I got to Greenhead, which is just before Adrian's Wall, and there was a support team there. And I was thinking, oh, yes, this is my ticket home. Free taxi home. Oh, brilliant. But fair pay to the guys. They didn't give me that option at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> they, just, uh, they just They just reminded me of what I've got in my bag because we got... Um, we have to carry things like a modium, things like that in our kit list. Yeah. They said, yep. you know, and they said, you know, if you've got um if you've got like hydration time stuff on you and things like this, uh, like they they all light, he said, you know, just, just take it or see what happens and have a little rest. They they just reminded me of things like that. And I took everything on board, what he told me. Um yeah, so I had a, few, a couple of door lights um, and I had a little lie down a Hadrian's wall. And then once I'd done that, then I was like a new man. I was uh, ready to smash it again. So, yeah, I was back in the game from that, which uh, was really, really good. I was happy with that. And, um, yeah, eventually found my speed again. Yeah, and, you yeah, absolutely you did. You came tearing into Kurt Yetham at the end of that race. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, it was a... So the last, my last part of me was on the Cheviots when it was overnight. Um, yeah, it's a pretty lonely place in the night. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get through it as fast as I could, really. Um, it, was cha- it was challenging, though, because uh, there was still loads of ice about the place on the flagstones oh, yeah. as well. So so you couldn't run on the flagstones because of the ice. But then either side of the flagstones, then you've got all the bogs. So it was a... Uh, it was a challenge, yeah, definitely a challenging night. Yeah, but it was good. I was, uh, yeah, I was happy, happy with that result. Um, and another uh, lesson for you there, you know, you, you, even when you think you're done, you're not done. You, you, you picked yourself up off the floor at Greenhead and, yeah. and put in a really strong performance. You, you yeah, maintained no, just, your first position through all that. Yeah, um, I think like the lineup going into that race, I didn't really see any names on it that were going to challenge me um so yeah there was definitely a big g- gap forming behind me um i think it was about a five hour lead i had in the end it yeah. was quite a comfy lead uh, but that's something I, w- I was expecting anyway um but yeah the, the biggest thing i got from challenges at north was is is preparing me for the big spy next year that's why that's the big thing that i'm taking away from it because that's what I want. That is my, it's not my A race. It's going to be my A star race, uh, spine race, the big spine is next year. So yeah, I'm going in the, to that one for a big win. Um, that's my- Mega. I, yeah. I, I'm really excited to hear that. That's yeah. that's going to be good fun. I'll be there, mate. I'll be at the finish line with the camera. You better turn up. <laughs> I'll be there, Well, Don't worry. Oh, nice one. Well, look, you've done the full spine before as well. And I know we have, you know, 
quite a few of the uh, spine community listen to this podcast and stuff. You you've done the full now, and you've absolutely smashed the Challenger North. Now that's that's in place. Yeah. What's what do you see as the big challenge going from the North to the full race? And what what did you were there many differences between the North and doing the full race? Because it's I know it's a hundred miles less, but it's still a hundred and sixty yeah. plus in one go. Yeah, um, so with the Challenger North race, I was I was always thinking, do I sleep or do I not? Do I plan a sleep? Because it's like 160 miles, you could probably push it and get away and not sleep in. Um so my my plan was to not plan a sleep, but do one if you need one doing if you can um i think i got to what's, what's the last checkpoint is uh bellingham bellingham yeah so i had a, had a huge lead to bellingham so i thought there's no need to actually smash myself i thought i could get um a little light i have a little lie down there but then that was it that was the only rest i had um so yeah, so that, that was for the Challenge of North, 160 miles, just a little bit of a lie down, really. And I had that little <laughs> lie down at, um, at Hadrian's Wall. But spine race, yeah, you, you, you're going to have to plan a little sleep at some point. But I think I may go in with the same plan, maybe not actually plan to sleep anyway, but just do it when I need it. I think yeah. so. Um, Do it when yeah. the spread of the field allows it as well. That's, yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, um, the big race is, 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 is bonkers, isn't it? It's mad how, how this year has played out uh, with all the dropouts and whatnot. I mean, anything can happen in the big race. Um, yeah, but what I've learned, though, from all, all these past couple of years is to not plan much and to take it as it comes. I think that's the best, that's the best thing you could do because... Uh, Yes, it's like that. What's the, uh, that saying? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just don't, don't plan much and take it as it comes, I think. Yeah, and the spine race does have a tendency to uh, dole out a few face punches here and there. Uh, yeah, it does, it does have a few, I, yeah. I, I, as you say, this this race in January was was a massacre. It was, it was like anyone got in the lead, there was a good chance they were about to get taken out. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, really yeah. tough. And a fair play to Ian Keith for showing what, you know, experience and preparedness can do for you. He he did yeah. his own thing and and yeah, yeah, came out with the ten year anniversary win. Amazing. I know, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, very excited to see you take on the full again next January, mate. I think that's gonna be great fun. Yeah, um, no, I um, yeah, really can't wait for it. And um yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be like Ian Keith, you know, make it you know, be a regular at the spine race, I think, because I, I I'm, I, I do adore that race, and yeah, I do do want to keep doing it. I think for as long as I can. So, uh, well, I guess it, it, this kind of comes back to motivation again. And when I asked earlier about whether or not you, you know, you were a very competitive runner, um, partly that was loaded because the one thing I did do before I went onto this podcast was uh, just Google Simon Roberts and see if there was any big facts out there about you that I hadn't come across or whatever. And uh, I found a little bio of you on one of the sponsors' websites where they described you as a as having a ferocious competitive drive. It, it, would you say that's about right? Is that is that what keeps you putting yourself into these meat grinder races like the Spine? Yeah, I, yeah, I do agree with that now. Um, but it's like I only learned this from myself over the past couple of years. Uh, yeah, I've got this. It's aggression to this, this desire to win now, and um, so I just want to keep doing it. I think, yeah, it's, it's become a part of me now, and that's my it's, it's a part of my life. It's what I do, um, so I just want to keep on doing it now. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely loving this running journey that I'm on. Um, Absolutely amazing, mate. You're, yeah. You seem to be at the crest of a wave at the moment. You might, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, no, I'm doing all these races, which I used to, you know, admire like the the podium finishers of these races, and now I'm becoming, well, I've become one of the, these podium finishers, which is just still seems crazy to me. You know, I'm still still getting used to it a bit, but yeah, I'm going into these races now, and that's, that's my aim for all of them is to to try and win. 
When we talk about the pandemic, you were saying, you know, you had a lot of time on your hands. So you went and watched the videos, read the books, learned about coaching, hit a few injuries, had a few snags, but but got your way through them. I do, where are you now with your training? What does a training week look like for you? Do you do you have a coach now that, that comes in and keeps an eye on what you're doing or do you still look after um, yourself? Yeah, no, I still, still coach myself. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I just I got a spreadsheet. And I <laughs> download the calendar for for Excel, and I literally just um, write my own little plans. Um, first of all, I'll just put in where the races are, and I'll work back from the races. Then, so I'll put in a taper week, uh, two one week or two week, depending on how big the race is. Um, but a, a general week for me is Monday to Friday sessions are an hour hour and a half, um, lots and lots of hill reps. And then lots of um, some a couple maybe one or two interval sessions, um, and then weekends. Then I'm usually at the uh, Brecon Beacons, so it's, it's like a thirty-five minute drive for me. So that's where I do my long runs then on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, yeah, I keep it pretty consistent, and that's it. Really. I don't do nothing special. I don't think. Um, um, I'm just yeah, very consistent. I do not I don't uh, don't miss a session pretty much um, and I just keep doing it um, yes I do enjoy training as well so that, that makes it easier I think um, and I, I just do it when I fit it in fit it in with work so I work at Bristol so I got a bit of a commute so um, yeah I just do runs whenever I, I can really so always the other thing with these podcasts and sort of interviewing these runners who are up on the podiums of these events and in so many other sports that would be your full-time gig if you were at if you were at that level of your sport, but yeah. you have a full time gig, right? This is this is the other world that you're in alongside yeah. it, and that's got to be a difficult balance sometimes, surely. Yeah, especially after winning the Dragons back, um, I just I was so focused on the running and my work took a bit of a hit. <laughs> I wasn't up, you know, I just my my effort was all on the running, and I went all all in on that, and then. I had to get that balance right again then of my professional career, uh, construction manager, and yeah. then my running career as well. So, yeah, you've got, got to keep the balance right, um, which I'm getting used to now. Only now, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean... I- I'm I'm impressed to hear that you know the results that you're getting and you're very much self-made at this point. You know you 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 have figured this stuff out for yourself during lockdown. I, I just wished I'd focused on that. I just took up bakery. You know it's <laughs> yeah. I, I I love me some cake though. Well, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring you something for the finish line oh, you know, in the nice spine next year. I'll I'll sort you out, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Well. I, the Chivy at Goat, then, that's a different experience again, then, isn't it? This this is a, a bit more of a compact experience than than something like the Dragon's Back or the or the Spine Race. Yeah, how, it's just back to a one-day race. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, how does that feel for you? Because some people seem to sort of get to a point where they kind of specialize. I'm, I'm only doing the really long events or I like a one day event. Whereas yeah. I was having a look at your profile and like your 5k and 10k times are disgusting. <laughs> you know, they're <laughs> really fast. But, and you will do this big broad range of events. Is, is there yeah. one that appeals to you more or will you just take on any challenge? Um, I'd, yeah, I like the variety things i think i like a one day ultra because you can i like to you know you can literally just smash yourself for for, for a full day <laughs> and not worry about uh, another day that's what you've got to think about when you're doing like a multi-day you've always got to think of the next day you know you you've got to save some so you can't read really, you got to play it it got to be a bit clever and um, not push it too much but then, yeah, like I like a, I do like a one day race where you can just go all guns blazing and not worry about the next day and see what you can do. You know, absolutely smash yourself. So um, that's a, it's a good thing about Chiva Goat. Um, it's a fifty five miler. They allow twenty four hours for it. So for some people, it is a, it is a twenty four hour race. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, um, I like to to do as fast as I could. Um, this one was a new course as well this year. 
So, uh, yeah, they changed the course. It was a, and I thought they made it harder as well. So it was, I was nice to them. Um, <laughs> lot, <laughs> it's just a lot more running off track. It's, well, it's not even tracks for most of it. And I was just lots of bracken, lots of tussocks, really nasty stuff to move through. Uh, found it found it really hard. It was a, it was a hell of a challenge. But, um, yeah, it was a pretty lonely race. Um, got a lead early on, and I was pretty much the story. <laughs> um seems to be happening to you a fair amount recently it does yeah it's a lonely it's a lonely hobby this is becoming <laughs> <laughs> i well i mean that that brings us on to something that i think a lot of runners will face uh, in these kind of distances whether you're at the front or the back in ultra running at these distances there are quite a lot of times when you're very isolated for a long time yeah it, it, do those do those times bother you? It like it, 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 there's obviously the psychological challenge to these kind of events as well. Is is that something that you you're at ease with? Yeah, definitely at ease with. I I train on my own. I do my long runs on the weekends, and I'm I'm on my own for the Saturday and the Sunday anyway. I, I just can't find anyone who wants to wake up early enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> literally, yeah, I, I like I like to go run in as soon as I wake up which is pretty early for when my dog wakes me up. This could be mm. half four or five. So um, as, soon, as soon as I'm up, then I'm obviously oh, gone. I'm just going to go, I'm gonna go run in. So, yeah, so I do all my training lonely and it um, prepares you well then for these races. These races, you will be on your own at some point and you could be on your own for a long time. So it's, uh, I think it's something you should, that people need to get used to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh well, you know what? Um, you've you've kind of segued us neatly into something here that I like to do. We've there's one of your tips there. Get used to uh, being on your own because you are going to be spending a lot of time on your own in these kind of events. Yeah, it, it, you, you have obviously off. as a you know self-made Mate. elite ultra runner over the last couple of years. <laughs> Let's give some of the listeners a, a little bit of benefit of your your accumulated experience here. Like, are there any other tips you've learned over the over these last few events that would help out anyone who's listening to this? Um, so yeah, so in these big events, so like we said, Jay, yeah, get used to being on your own because you gotta you gotta motivate yourself to move, keep mo- keep moving your feet uh, forward. Um, Dragon's back. I was started shouting at myself and screaming at myself, uh, which was a new thing for me. I've ne- never done that before, but yeah, I was doing anything I could just to stop myself from slowing down and walking. I was literally just screaming at myself, saying, right, you know, tell myself to run and stop, stop walking. Um, I was hit, hit, hitting those, uh, those hard moments. Oh. Um, and then the other big thing I think is, is nutrition. Um, you are, the, people call them eating contests and they are, um, you just you cannot stop eating. I think once you stop eating, or once you have stomach problems and you stop eating, that's when the body starts to um, switch off then and shut down. Um, I think yeah, it's it's a, it's a big thing in these races. I think is uh, people who, who hit these races hard are the ones that can eat a lot and run for, yeah. for a long time. From working behind the scenes on races like this for the last sort of god seven eight years now i've been doing this sort of thing and yeah it's the guys who stop eating that we keep a very close eye on because yeah. you, you know that they're about to run into trouble yeah yeah a good tip this is good we're on a roll right. anything else you'd suggest for people that are trying to turn themselves into a, a self-made ultra athlete um so it's like i said you know i, I, I learned to I learned proper running technique and speed on on the roads so don't neglect that because um, that is where proper running technique and speed is made is on the roads and on the tracks. Um, so don't don't neglect that. Even though lots of people think it's boring and it's not proper running, it's not in the mountains. But you can't learn that those types of skills running on hills all the time. So that's something I think people should definitely just consider maybe once or twice a week do a speed session on the roads. Um, but then, in contrast to that, then you also need to be good at moving through all the crap as well. So you need to be running in the hills and through all the horrible terrain and get used to running through through that type of stuff as well. Um, so yeah, you need a balance of the both, I think. 
Okay, sound advice. Sound advice from uh, Simon Roberts there. And uh, I think the the last thing I've got scribbled down in my notepad here that I wanted to ask you about is what next? And we, we've kind of touched on that because we've said your A-plus race coming up is 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 the winter spine. But yeah. it seems like the world's your oyster at the moment. What what else are you going to throw yourself at? Yeah, so I'm calling that my A-plus race because I've got my A races as well. Um, I've got Cape Wrath Ultra, which is next month. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, I'm just looking forward to being in the scenery for that one. I've watched all the videos, seen all the photos. I've never run up and run up Scotland either, so just can't wait to see that scenery, and I, I hope we've got the weather for it. Um, so that's, a, that's an eight-day stage race, um, but it's got some smaller, it's got about three smaller days. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to those days. So then it can mean it's a, it's lots of time to chill out in the evenings then and, and have a chat with people and things like that. So, yeah, looking forward to that one. Um, and then I am going back to the Dragons back then to defend my title, which will be in uh, September. So that's, uh, that's my, my second A race. And that should finish off this year nicely. Then, so then I'll be knuckling down then, getting ready for the big spine, which will be in January. Exciting yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait for that. Uh, fair enough. And I mean, I guess you are pretty much focused on racing while uh, while you are doing as well as you are, as we said, riding the crest of a wave. But I, a lot of the people I interview lately the pandemic sort of pushed them into looking at other stuff like their own challenges, their own records, their own stuff like that. Is there a bucket list of stuff for Simon Roberts further down the line? Um, yeah, definitely. I'd like to hit the European races a bit next year. Um, UTF, UTMB, that sticks out to me as it sticks out to everyone. Um, mm. So I'd like to get into that. But if not that one, and I'm looking at the Tour de Jean as well. Which I think actually would be a bit better because it's a, it's a non-stop, and I'm thinking I I'm, I like the sound of these non-stop races. Um, I definitely prefer them. So, but awesome. yeah, so UTMB Tour de Jean, um, and then yeah, who knows? I don't know. I, I do like the look of these these proper race. He's, he's got these proper winter ultras like in Alaska and Sweden and things like that. Um, yeah, I like to get into that in a, maybe a, f- a few years as well where you got to pull a, pull a sled behind you and things like that. <laughs> yeah. They, they definitely look good to me. Um, I'll, I'll get into one of them at, at some point, I think, as well. Awesome. Well, I I look forward to following your adventures, mate. I, I, and I really mean it. I can't, I can't wait for you to come along in January next year. I think that's going to be absolutely epic. And uh, good luck in the events you've got coming up over the rest of 2022. Uh, yeah. Woe betide anyone running beside you at the moment, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, I can't, uh, can't wait. Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, um, Simon, thanks very much for taking the time to chat to me today. I really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, enjoy the rest of your day and, and massive good luck with uh, with your training over the next few weeks and your recovery from COVID. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cheers, Will. Thanks, thanks for having me on, mate. It's been good to chat with you. Awesome. All right, pal. Bye for now. All right, cheers, Will. Well.